agricultural mechanization space, there are various players in the industry with much more experience in the field. What is the differentiating factor between these players and Shuja Tractor? Well, uh, one of the things that uh, we wanted to prove a point because the manufacturers of John Deere, Masse Ferguson, uh, Kubota's and other big commercial tractors, these tractors come from outside Kenya. The people producing those tractors are engineers just like us. We want to also prove a point that as Kenyan trained engineers within the institution of higher learning, we can now come up with our own product so that the money that the, the, the country is spending to import those machinery, that money, that the money can actually be used here locally and save the much needed foreign currency that can be used to do something else. So this is not uh, rocket science. John Deere, yes, we can make it. Uh, Master Ferguson, we can make them here in Kenya. We have the expertise. The only thing that we need is the environment that we need facilities that can be used setting up to produce those particular tractors. There are also a couple of features that Shuja Tractor Team have racked up. Mulamu shares with us the features and how it works. Features uh, of the tractor and how we can use it for land preparation. Uh, what I'll say is that uh, as you can see, the components or the parts of the tractor, they're more or less similar, it's only that they're scaling down. This particular tractor, you can see here, it can actually do plowing. It has a multiple plow, which you are going to see. It can also do uh, harrowing, it has a harrow. You can do spraying, it has a sprayer. And then also you can also do transportation, it has a trailer. So how these work, for example, the trailer, we have a dropper where we have the, the, the trailer actually attached to the tractor. About the plow, we have the three-point hitch where now we can attach the plow uh, the harrow, and then uh, we have, if there's a sprayer, we have the tractor PTO under the three-point hitch. The PTO is basically to pump at great pressure for the spray to come out through the, the nozzles. Then we have the trailer, basically for transportation, farm produce from the farm, from the dairy, like that. You can use it for harvesting. For example, now I've done the harvesting of maize or tea, or coffee on my two, three, five, ten acre piece of land. Because it is to maneuver, I love my trailer there, fill it up to about uh, 1.5 tons. It's able to carry about 1.5 tons. Then you, from the farm to the storage point. Yeah. If someone wanted to, to buy a, a Shuja tractor, there are a few things that you need to put into consideration. One, are you within the parameter where the Shujaa tractor can be used? That is the land size. Are you within that particular parameter between one to 10 acres sizes of land? Two, do you have the knowledge on how it is operated? Now, in case you don't have the knowledge on how it is operated, we have done an advanced preparation of SMEs who are trained in India for about three weeks. The SMEs were, with, were drawn from about 10 counties. And these 10 counties are Machakos, Itui, Makweni, Kakamega, Bungoma, Viga, Busia, Siaya, Kisumo, um, Migori, and uh, Bomet. So these SMEs, we have now actually given them the task of trainer of trainers. Now once we know the farmer who wants to buy this tractor has challenges in terms of uh, operation, we dispatch those SMEs to the farmer to train the farmer on the operation, servicing and maintenance. But that will be, will be done at a cost because the SMEs also need to be empowered. They do the work and then they get their earning from there. So we are simply trying to empower both the farmer and the SMEs. So we'll find many youth will get employment.
Standards represent a consensus among various players in a given industry and define voluntary characteristics and rules in that space. When it comes to Shuja Tractor, the case is similar. We must be able to develop standards that are in agreement with the international standards. And for us to be able to do that so that we can actually be able to qualify to sell this tractor outside the borders of this country, we had to sit down as a committee which was appointed uh, by both the University Authority and the Kenya Bureau of Standards. So we had uh, members of the committee came from the university, I being part of that committee. Then we also had committee members from Kenya Bureau of Standards and then numerical machining companies. We were to look at the international standards and then develop standards of this Shujaat tractor based on those international standards, which we did. Once we developed those standards, we called a stakeholders workshop, which came in, in, that was on the 13th of February this year. We are to go and go, we are, we are to go through the standards and then ratify that these actually, they have actually made the international standards. A document has been developed. This document, now it can qualify as anywhere in the world to sell, to sell Shuja tractor authoritatively without fear or favor. Yeah. Uh, type of standards uh, that you've said, actually, uh, like when you talk about the wheel base, that is the wheel with it, the wheel with it must be in standard with the other similar machines anywhere in the world. The tire pressure, size of the tires, uh, the steering wheel, the gearbox speed, the, the headlamps, uh, the exhaust, all these are some of the standards actually that must be totally in tandem with the international standards. That is truly a product made by Kenyans for the world. Mulamu and the project manager on the ground, Peter Nyariki, share with us the county plans they have for Shuja. Well, uh, Shuja Tractor, what I want to say is that um, we decided after getting a few pieces to take out to the farmers for pilot uh, kind of um, testing. And I want to proudly say that um, we have these tractors stationed in uh, Machakos County, Katumani. Uh, we have, we have uh, another one in Makweni. We have uh, another one in uh, Migori, Siaya, Kakamega, Bungoma, and Busia. And also during the exhibition, uh, when we're having uh, the agricultural site of Kenya shows, farmers have come to see and get a demonstration on how it looks like. And as I'm talking now, we have got orders of Shujaat tractors going to about 3,000 from the farmers. But we are not able to deliver now because we are still actually organizing to get these parts uh, fabricated, then uh, assembled and tested. The challenges that we have right now is that um, we don't have the facilities uh, locally here in the country. So we have gone ahead, having done our production drawing in collaboration with the numerical machining complex, we have been able to get um, an MOU with a, a, a factory in India based on our design to produce parts for this particular tractor. These parts are brought into the country, then it is asked to assemble and test. One, the, one the tractor has passed the test, we are now able to sell the tractor to the farmers. The project started in the year 2013-2014. We've been learning for the last four years. Uh, it's a, a project which was started to assist in terms of agricultural production. The main objective was to derive the farmers, local farmers, especially the small-scale farmers, of, of the paddle of in terms of using manual labor and animal or draft animal technology in terms of land preparation. So this tractor was to assist the small scale farmers in terms of preparing their runs and two other farm operations. 
this project was when it was started, there was some uh, kind of spirit study done in terms of areas in which farmers in Kenya are mostly using steel oxen or donkeys or manual reaper. That's how we came to select uh, 10 counties to represent Kenya in terms of where we are placing the pilot projects. Uh, the 10 counties involve uh, Machakos, Kitwe, Makueni. Then we have on the western side, we have uh, Kakamega, uh, Migori, Siaya, Nyanz, uh, that's in Nyanza region. Then we have uh, Busia, Kuyiga, and Pungoma. So in these projects, in terms of rolling out the, the project there, we had to at least see the model in which it could be best accepted by the farmers. We had to talk to the farmers. We found that the most farmers in Kenya, they work as groups. So we entered into farmers as in, through their groups. So in areas where we will find some farmers already organized, they are doing some farming activities, for example, manko farming, and we will approach them and introduce the project to them, what it does and what the benefits will be. So in giving the project, the project to the farmers, we had to train them in terms of the usage, how they at least drive the tractor, some servicing, and uh, just basic driving. And you will find that in most areas in Kenya, you, you will not lack at least a driver around within a village. So we are very much uh, off the burden in terms of that getting a driver within a village you could be able at least to drive, and then just giving him the instructions of now plowing and other farm operations. So after choosing the groups, then you, of course we had to monitor at least C and see also look at the local authority, if they are well known, well registered, and then we will be able to give them a tractor for use. The tractor will be given the, the group, they will fill the tractor, and then they will use it for plowing. They will not pay anything. For them, we send them there just to plow, and then maybe be a driver if they are going to engage a driver in, in their own areas. Yeah. In the 10 countries, we had, we had a very positive response in terms of the usage of the tractor. Uh, it's very highly acceptable to the farmers in terms of how it has been able to assist them to reduce, especially in terms of the number the animals. Then you will find that most of them, they were hiring. Not all of them keep the animals, the oxen for plowing. So they were hiring. So instead of hiring the animals now, they will use the tractor. When you hire animals, you, you know, at least you queue. It's a queue, you wait, but the tractor is a bit faster. So you are not able to wait for that long and you are able to prepare your run in time. So, uh, so currently we have a lot of, uh, we anticipate that uh, most of the farmers have shown us interest in terms of they can be able to purchase. Some of them are through groups, individual farmers, and then there are those who are requesting to be given financing. Then financing, we, we will be engaging the financial sector to see how best they can be assisted to get funds to acquire these tractors. Then we have currently is, uh, on cash payment because uh, it's a, a young enter, uh, enterprise is starting off. We do not have that much money we can give credit to the farmers. That's why we are saying if we engage the commercial banks, those will be able to maybe offer some loans to the farmers, then they are able to maybe pay zero zero. Jar Tractor plans to officially launch and roll out soon, there is a widening gap for more Kenyans to stand up and make agri-technologies that can assist in helping Kenya become more food secure. Mulamu shares with us his nuggets of wisdom for budding innovators. My advice actually is, is my advice is simple. Uh, you simply get in touch with the experts, work as a team, and then uh, you're able to come up with a solution towards them.